Jonathan Holmes, welcome. Is Hi, there a need for a public interest media advocate to oversee the decisions of the Press Council? Well, um, according to uh, Ray Finkelstein, there's a need for a much tougher one than the government is proposing. Mind you, if you look at the reaction of the Daily Telegraph in Sydney today, uh, comparing uh, Stephen Conroy with Stalin and Mao and Castro and so on... Um, Do you think uh, the Press Council will probably get a few complaints uh, uh, about that? You, you wonder why he didn't go for the tough one, because he couldn't have got <laughs> worse treatment. And if that's, a, you know, that's an example, I suppose, of the kind of thing um, that the Labor government would love to... to to, to regulate. But look, they're not going to be able to do that. Why not? What they've proposed, as I understand it, and, and everyone's trying to get ac across this, is a single person who, among other, uh, uh, will look at um, media diversity uh, and rule on a public interest test as to whether mergers are okay. That's on or not, mergers. On yep. the merger side. Yep. On, the, on, the, on, on what the press publishes, as far as I can gather, his job will be to satisfy himself or herself that the press council and any other kind of complaints organisations set up by online organisations or by, for example, um, the West Australian, which has got its own uh, regulator, it opted out of the Press yeah. Council, that they fulfil certain minimum standards about satisfying complaints. He is not going to be able to intervene, we are told, with the actual individual decisions that those organisations make about individual complaints. But he or she will have a pretty sharp stick, a significant stick to use if the Press Council doesn't adhere to the standards that it's supposed to be adhering to. That again is, is, is a bit murky. I mean, interestingly, it was the Australian Press Council itself in its submissions to the Finkelstein Report and to the Convergence Review that recommended that some kind of stick be used to persuade uh, major media organisations to join the Press Council. If they didn't, suggested Julian Disney, uh, one possibility would be uh, to take away the privileges that are attached to the press, notably that under the privacy exemption. Now, so, so I mean, that idea was actually touted by the Press Council. In what circumstances um, this very uh, strong sanction, and it is a strong sanction, um, might be exercised, I think we have to wait for the legislation to see. I suspect it's, it's more about um, persuading people to come under some kind of press council or some similar organisation right. and not to just go without anything. So are you saying that on the basis of what we've seen so far and we haven't seen much, but if there is this public interest media advocate overseeing the press council that they won't be able to do much anyway? Look, I'd be surprised if it makes much m much difference. It, it is true, as, as you know, critics are saying, that this will be the first time that the government has got any kind of role, even, even indirectly, in the content of the print media since depending how you look at it, 1823 or 16 something or other. Um, and so it is, it is a, a, a new step, and, and it's hard to see, as I've argued in the past, why at a, just at the moment, when, when uh, press diversity is proliferating online, uh, we suddenly need a, a new layer of regulation. I, I mean, I think it's hard to understand why we need that, unless it is indeed, um, as, as News Limited keeps saying, all about the stoush between the Labor government and News Limited. Right. Okay, well, moving on from that issue to the merger, so this p public interest media advocate will have the uh, power of um, involving a public interest test on, on a merger if one's, one goes ahead. What do you think about that proposal? Look, uh, uh, the complaints about it, again, mainly from News Limited, but from others too, are that it's very vague. Um, it's, it's simply what we've got at the moment is sort of black letter law. You can have 75% of the audience if you're a television station or you can have so many uh, local radio areas and, and th there, are, there are quantitative tests that you can apply uh, and those are going to be dispensed with largely because they're simply irrelevant in the digital world. Um, you can't define where your audience is anymore. Anyone can go to any website. Uh, and so instead there's going to be this much vaguer public interest test. But of course that can be applied politically, there's no doubt about it. And I suspect that one of the very strong views of the Gillard government is that they don't want to see News Limited getting more power than it already has. So the ACCC um, is, is adequate in terms of dealing with merger questions? Uh, uh, look, the ACCC has its rules that are essentially, as I understand it, you know, market rules about market power. Um, what the government wants to have is a further look at public yeah. interest for media, which has which has a very different kind of kind of ambit to it. Um, yeah. 
you know, now, now to what extent that will end up being political control, given that it's only one person, and that's a concern. I mean, a similar sort of organisation is being mooted in, in the UK, but it's going to be a whole quango, you know, uh, 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 with very complicated rules about, about who you appoint to that and, and their independence from government as well as from media. Uh, this one person uh, is going to be appointed by government, and that does make it a much more direct, uh, uh, I suppose, influence on on what they regulate. Okay, there'd been a lot of speculation about the 75% reach rule going into this. The government has parked that in a committee. Is it only a matter of time before that rule is dropped because of the changing media landscape? Uh, no, I don't think it is. I think one of the things that we've learnt over the years is the enormous power of, of the proprietors of free-to-air television. Uh, they always seem to get their way in the end. Now, at the moment, Channel 9 is on the one side and 7 and 10 are on the other side. 7 and 10 do not want to see 9 getting the additional power it would get if it took over Southern Cross Media. So you're going to see a furious lobbying battle in Canberra between 7 and 10 on one side, uh, at, joined by News Limited and lots of others, uh, and, and 9. And who will win that? I wouldn't so like to guess. That's still very much in the air, I you think? think? So. Are you concerned for the future of regional news if that is allowed to go ahead? Um, I am a bit, although it's pretty shoddy at the moment in many cases. <laughs> but you it's know, still a service for It, for it is a service, Australia. but often, for example, you know, you'll find that... that regional news service, especially in radio, are coming out of a hub like Canberra and they're servicing uh, little towns all across New South Wales. Local news is, is pretty hard to come by as mm. it is. But yes, it, it's going to increase the, the problems there. Yeah, you mentioned the power of the uh, commercial networks. How big a win was that for them in terms of the licence fee rebate? Well, according to the independent tele producers of programmes, they're very upset. In fact, it's hard to find people who aren't upset about <laughs> it. But, but they're upset because they think that in the guise of, of imposing Imposing tougher uh, standards about producing Australian programs and putting them on the air in exchange for this big dish of money that the government's given to the free-to-air networks, what it's actually done is going to make it possible for them to make less. Show more, but make less, because they can use repeats, um, they can use um, reality television, cheap reality television, they don't have to do X amount of drama or X amount of children's television. Uh, it's a looser kind of, of rule, and, and, and the independent producers are worried it's going to result, as I say, in a decrease in, in the stuff they actually make. So is there anything good about this package as far as you can see? Look, when you, when you produce something that is such a kind of dog's breakfast, one's tempted to say, given that they've had two extremely solid reports in front of them for nearly a year, to suddenly come up with this with only a couple of weeks to look at it, um, all the opponents are going to go for it, and, and the opponents... Uh, you know, the, the proponents, there aren't very many of them. I mean, I mean, even the independents are upset because it's not tough enough in, so it's, in, in it's, some it's, cases. So it's not likely it's going to get passed in Parliament anyway? I don't know. I mean, that no. remains to be seen. I yeah. mean, the Greens and, and the independents yeah. may decide, which I'm sure is what Senator Conroy is hoping, that this is better than nothing. So, so as someone who watches the media very closely, uh, what, what do you think about the, the process that we've come to this point now where we've finally got some legislation before Parliament and it's being described by uh, uh, many people as a dog's breakfast? Well, look, I think it is a pity that, that, that after so long we're getting so little so late and... Uh, and, and so rushed. I, I just think that's that's a pity. But but people should be very careful about reading about this in the media. You cannot trust the media to report <laughs> on itself in this way. What's the ABC? Well, uh, we, we, at least we're less threatened, if you like, <laughs> than anyone else. So, so yes, maybe we can do it more fairly than others. And hopefully we'll see the detail on Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, I think, the legislation is being revealed. I believe so. Okay, Jonathan, thanks for coming in. You're welcome, Joe.